praise the Lord. When the Spirit moves us, we will praise the Lord. When the Spirit moves us, we will shout hallelujah. Are you moved by the Spirit this morning? Can you shout hallelujah? That would be our song forever. And that will be our song when we get to heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. With Jesus' joy, I want to welcome every one of us to worship again this morning. Uh, last Sunday, till Wednesday, had been days we will never forget in our lives. Because God visited us. Uh, there were people who were not here with us physically, outside the country. They did not miss any day. At least I received a call from one or two people who said, Ah, Pastor, I can never miss something like that. And we thank God for the man of God. Uh, as I was discussing with him about next year, he said 2024 for him is fully booked from January to December. And uh, we, we had to force him to check his diary again. He, didn't, he did it reluctantly. But eventually, by God's grace, maybe for our sake, he was able to book October next year. He just saw. <laughs> so it may not be as hardly as we had it this year. But God will spare our lives. But the good thing is that the ones we have listened to, that God will help us to apply them. And that is what I just want to consolidate on what the man of God, many of the things he touched upon the last week. I took time, the notes I took, I read it over again, and what came to my mind is that this marriage is just a school. We have heard it over and over and over again that marriage is a school. And I just want to talk about that school this morning. And it's for every one of us. We, so I'll be talking about marriage as a school of life. Marriage as a school of life. It's been reputed to be the oldest institution in the world. So, if it is an institution, then it is a school of learning. It's a school of learning. This institution we know was established by God for the human race. Whether we are black or white, whether we are Christians or not, it was a school established by God himself, right from the creation of the world. And in that school, we learn many, many things. And you will notice also that even in real life, we don't have school of marriage. We don't have a school where they will teach us marriage. We only learn from where we were born, from the larger community, from the neighborhood, while we are growing up. So we pick bits and bits and bits here and there before we settle down. But many times, the core curriculum of the things we bring from home, many times they are not from the Bible. We pick many things from experience, some from the culture, the culture where we find ourselves growing up, some from what we just see practiced around us. Even when we don't think that we have learned it, we see ourselves doing it unconsciously when we have entered the marriage. Some will work, some will not work. And when they are not working, it becomes a problem, both to husband and wife. So in marriage, we learn many things about ourselves. There are things we do in marriage, we never thought we knew it. There are things we say, we never thought, ah. so that thing came out of my mouth. Yes, out of my mouth. 
out of your mouth. We never knew it's there. So it's in marriage that some of these things, good and bad, they begin to come out. Some things we never thought were there in the hard disk. When occasion calls for it, what will happen? Just come out. Then if we are going to make something good, we need to observe and sit down and learn. Not only about our spouse, but ourselves also. Ourselves. I often wonder, some things that outsiders will do, we will not react, we will not see anything. Inside the house, we will react. Why is it that during courtship, we'll be saying, I love you, I like you, and all manner of things, but the moment we enter into marriage, things will just change. Things we will just say, well, if it's a sibling, say, well, after some time, all of us will leave this house and we go different ways. We don't pursue them. But inside marriage, we pursue it. I think, as I'm thinking about it, it has to do with resource control. It has to do with resource control. And it has to do with control of space. Who controls this space? The resources available for us, how do we share it? How do we manage it? And each person in the family does not want to be cheated, does not want to be outsmarted, depending on the background. And that's why many things that we are supposed to overlook, we will not overlook it. Yes, even when we are not overlooking it, which method are we using that will not cause crisis in the family? All of these things are the things we learn in marriage. So we learn about our own selves, our emotions, our manner of speaking, our manners of reacting to issues. We learn. We learn about our children in marriage. We learn about values. We value different things. What one somebody values so much, maybe nothing to the other person. How do we marry the two? How do we come to an agreeable middle? Whether the values are shared or individual. Sometimes we learn in marriage about our sinful and dark sides. Sinful and dark sides. We learn in marriage because they will come. They will come out. When the situation is very ripe, that sin that is dark in our heart will come out. I have given this example before. Sometimes we think we, we, I cannot behave this way. I cannot do this way. But when the situation is very, very conducive, you will be surprised. This is an example. What I mean by dark side, something that people of, around us may not notice. But when the situation is, when we are under pressure, that thing that is there will jump out. That's why Jesus Christ said, out of the abundance of the heart, the man speak. Like this example, the man of God some years ago when it's only the pastor that we have fun on top of his, of his uh, the puppy when he's preaching. And the church was so low that his hand could reach up. So this man of God then was preaching and preaching and gesticulating like I'm doing now. He did not know when the finger it's the fan. And by the time the, the fan, the blade caught his hand, he said, Suck so my no. <laughs> so he just shouted, Suck so my no. Now, what, what does that teach us? Eh? The condition was right to bring out the man. That's really controlling his life. The condition was very, very appropriate. That was the man that was controlling the life of the pastor. And when he came under pressure, when he came under danger, when his life was threatened, the real man of the heart spoke out. That is what happens in marriage. So nobody can actually say, he provoked me. 
She provoked me. No. The thing was there before. Before. Yoruba people say, Enita Konika. Toshe. Oniti no Esheni. Somebody you are teaching, this is how you will be wicked to your friend or whatever. And you went ahead to do it. It's because you have the trait of it. Otherwise, when they are teaching you, you will walk away. Is it not so? You will say, no, I don't have such seed. So when we are under pressure and something came out, just know that there are areas we have to deal with. They are there, sitting down. It's just waiting for the right condition. And those are the things we get to know about ourselves. And of course, in marriage, we also get to know and formulate what we believe about God. We're always thinking, especially when there's a problem. God, how did I come to this point? Did you actually lead me? Did I hear you well? Am I sure that you are the one who asked me to do this? And, and we begin to say, God, what is your take on this? Just look at this and we begin to formulate our beliefs. But I think we can always go back to the Bible. These are things that are going on. And I'm sure the family revival last week must have set many of us thinking and reflecting on our marriage. But we must not give up. Hallelujah. We must not do what? No matter how difficult it is. No matter how hard. I think as Christians, we cannot afford to give up. We cannot afford to give up. We cannot lose hope because God is still interested. He does not give up on anyone. He does not give up on any marriage. Look at, he knew us as human beings. If you look at marriages in the Bible, you hardly find a perfect one. But yet, God was with them. God was with them. As much as they allowed God to come in, God was able to settle some things. And they were able to fulfill their purpose. Praise God. We shall fulfill purpose. The thing about marriage is not really my enjoyment. What is in need for me? It's about purpose. Once we have agreed, as husband and wife with God, we are going to go into this, there's a purpose. And if we don't fulfill that purpose, we have simply wasted God's time, wasted our own lives. It would have been better if we did not come into it at all. God is still interested. That's why the passage that we have chosen this month, in verse 1, God said, at the same time, say the Lord, will I be the God of all families of Israel, and they shall be my people. That's a commitment. I will be the God of all families. As God is saying, I will be the God of your family. I, I, I know what is going on there. The one who creates the highs, does he not see? The one who, create, or who created the high, the one who created the hair, does he not hear what is going on? But he's still saying, look, irrespective of that, I will be the God of your family. I will. It's a commitment God has, said, has, has made. And he said, they shall be my people. Look at verse 2. The Bible says, thus said the Lord, the people we were, which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness. And God was making this commitment after a calamity. Many things befell the people. Some died. Some have lost many things. God still came and said, look, I will still be your, I will be your God. It doesn't matter what you have lost. And verse 3, look at what he said. He said, the Lord appeared of hold unto me, saying, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Is even the one doing what? Drawing us. Drawing us. So we cannot conclude that it is finished. We cannot conclude that it is over. We don't have such powers. 
It's only God who can say, it is finished with this family. Yes, our experiences may be saying otherwise, but you know that our experiences are limited. They are limited. We cannot use our experiences to judge what God is doing. We can't. So this morning, quickly, I'll just share a few things. I saw this idea from a popular poem about marriage. It was titled, School of Marriage. And I just felt, we just think through it. And I know God will help us. Every home is under the attack of the devil. Under the attack of the devil. Some, a few, maybe three, four years ago, I was listening to a tape uh, by uh, Pastor Ye Adeboye. He was addressing pastor's meeting. And I think that tape must have been, that message must have been made around 2010 or 2011. Baba is uh, 80, I hope I'm 81 this year. All right, maybe if you remove 10 years from that, so now it was 71. And they may have been married close to 35, 40 years. You will have thought, uh -uh, at that level of anointing, Abi, at that level of pop popularity at that age, they shouldn't be having issues again. We will have concluded ah, ah, by now, by now, ah, people like Baba Deboye should not be having issues with their wives. But in that, in that tape, he was talking to pastors and was saying, look, and he gave many examples. One of the examples he gave was that even at home, Mama will still come at that age. They are almost walking like this, though. Walking like this. I don't know. God will deliver us. Mama will still come. And Mama is still saying, eh, those women who are coming to see you in your office, who, who, you have to be careful. Those, eh, I have, I, and, and I know Baba will have been saying, after all these, yes. When I listened to that tape, I just did like this. I just did like this to myself. At that age. So don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Don't say, don't you see? And I'm sure Mama may be making reference to other pastors. Then look at the Bishop Oyedepo. Look at the way he's doing. How is he doing? Have you listened to their own? We are human beings. So Baba was warning them, so look, all you need to do is to ask for wisdom. Wisdom. And you will have been wondering, Mama, at what age? What is Baba looking for again? But again, you can't take that away from a woman. You cannot do what? Take that away from a... She wants to take care of what belongs to her. It is the man now that, without, that will now make sure that such negative thoughts never come to pass. Are you following me? If they are 100, Mama will still warn him. Even when they begin to sit on wheelchair, Mama will still be saying, that woman that is greeting you, where is she greeting you? She spent, it's better three minutes. She spent ten minutes. It is very, very natural. It is the man. But if one takes that and begins to do all manner of things, it will not change anything. I don't know whether you are following me. So no marriage is perfect. As we grow in age, New things are causing disagreement. Is it not so? All right. New things. Those blessings that God is bringing, they can even cause problem. So we need to just cool down. And know that we are in a school. Abi? And when you are in school, you keep on learning. Learning comes, never comes to an end. The first part I want to share, mention quickly. In the school, who are the members of the marriage community? The school committee. Number one, 
God is the founder and the only principal. Like we know, God is the founder and the only principal. The father of the house is not the principal. Well, this is just my own categorization as human beings. I think Jesus Christ is the first principal academics. He's the one who organizes the curriculum. Abby, what we need to learn from time to time, this month you are learning this, this month you are learning this, is the one who does that. The Holy Spirit, by my own characterization, is the vice principal, admin, and human resources. All right? The Holy Spirit is the vice principal, admin, and human resources. Then all the members of Trinity, the three of them are the instructors. The three of them are the instructors. The Bible or the Word of God is the curriculum and the textbook. The Word of God is the curriculum and that's the one we read the least. That's the one we don't apply when there are problems, when there are challenges. The devil will lead us to go to our hard disk to bring out that thing that we have stored in the file, inside, 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 in the zip, you know, the zip file. The devil knows how to break into the zip and bring the action instead of consulting the Bible and say, look, when it was like this with Abraham, what did he do? We don't usually wait to ask for such things. Then both husbands and wives are students. Yes, one of us may be senior prefect. The other one may be maybe food prefect or air prefect. But at best, the two of us are what? Students in that school. All right? Then our children will join the school later. As we give back to them, they, always, they also enroll in the school. What are the truths about the school? Like, when we do marriage here, on the day of marriage, marriage is the only school where we get the certificate before we start. On the day of convocation, no, not convocation, on the day of matriculation, they give us certificates. And we have not worked. Just like Reverend Awokwekba used to explain. That means, when we get the certificate that day, that means the people are reposing a confidence in us that we are going to work for it. Abi? And that's why the work of marriage cannot come to an end. When somebody say, I'm not even doing it again, then they will withdraw the certificate. So we get the certificate because we are going to work for it. Then there's a confidence in the couple that they will not fail. They will not fail. So we get the certificate. And the man of God mentioned something. And that's why every marriage that has no certificate, whether with the, the church or the government, the man of God said they are what? Thieves and robbers. And he actually enjoined us to write some things. We did that when we were in Abba. Uh, when we got there and we started discipleship and the rest of them, I found out that there were people in the church, they met there in the city and they started living together. The children were already old, getting married, getting ready to go to school, to settle down in life. But by the time we started discipleship, they responded. These were people who wanted to serve God. Their hearts were opened. And one day, one day, the church might be thinking, oh, where are we going to get our deacon and deaconesses? These are people, you interact with them, you know that they were open to the Holy Spirit. But at the beginning, they got it wrong. So I called all of them who were involved. And I explained, it's never too late. To do dowry is never too late. To do your wedding properly is never too late. And then, we sat down and I told them what to do. Those who have not done dowry, they went back to the village. No matter how small, you can finish dowry. Abi, anytime there's a ceremony in the family, it's part of dowry. You must shake body. All right? Anytime you send your father-in-law or mother-in-law to heaven, you have to pay dowry. 
No matter how little, go and do something. And they went, they did it. So, and we set a day for their marriage blessing. Some of them were as old as 50, 60, and whatever. And they made wedding gown, wedding suit. Their children were the best man and the ring bearer and the rest of them. On that day, we came to church. I think they should be about 11, if I remember very well. And we did marry blessing on a day. Come and see joy. It was like a minus in their lives. But I'm sure they had peace. We did it inside the church. It is never too late. It's never too late. Because you don't know what God is bringing your way. So the man of God has told us, there are so many things we can use this opportunity to write, put them right. There's nothing to be ashamed of. The time of unknown, God has winged upon. Are you following me? Anybody who will talk, let them, let them talk. As long as you have peace with God, and that's what this pulpit is for, so that we can make peace with who? Anybody who will talk, let them talk. Once you have peace. So in this school, it's a school where no one will ever graduate as long as we live. The only one that can graduate us is death. When there is death, that person has graduated from this school. It is a school without a break or free period. But we are seeing more of that these days. People will get married two, three, four years down the line. Say, Let's give ourselves a break. And one of them will pack out. That is not what God had in mind. There's no break. There's no free period. Even when you travel, there's no free period. Marriage, there's no break, no free period. It's a school where no one is permitted to drop out. No one is permitted to do what? To drop out. Then it's a school that we attend every day of our lives. It's a school we attend every day. We attend classes every day. Even as we are seated here, forget the fact that I'm talking from here. Even the mother that you are sitting with your husband or your wife, you are in school. Abby, you are in school. Because sometimes, maybe there's, there's, there's been an issue between husband and wife, and pastor says something. The wife may say, she and you are not bad with you. Abby, you just like this, daddy she and she has gone with the pastor, so book born now. Ah, she be me not, but it is. They are still in, in school. We are in school. There's no break. So all this idea, let's have a break. Give me a break. It doesn't work. If one is if one is Nigeria, the other one is the US, you are still in school. So marriage is that school. So don't let us be disillusioned. Don't let us be confused. Ah, Rule Iri. Ah, this our own. In fact, it is the worst in the whole world, not lie. It's because we have not heard that of your neighbor. Don't we should not allow the devil to paint the picture of hell. Because when we catch, when we internalize that picture, you will lose hope. And once we lose hope, there's no joy. It's a school where there's no sick leave for holidays. No sick leave. In fact, when one, a member of the family is sick, it is time for practicals. Do you agree with me? When any member of the family is sick, either the wife or the husband or the children, it is time for what? Practicals. It is time for practicals. That's when God wants to say, okay, now you are going to put into practice what you have, you have to have learned. So there's no sick leave or holiday. Then it's a place where we can never, we should never assume that we know it all. Assumption that I know it all 
can be very, very disastrous. That assumption, and that assumption, I believe, is killing many homes. I know it all. I know it all. Where one is not open-minded to receive fresh information, whether it makes sense or not, at least we need to receive it. Assumption could be very costly. I know it. I know it. When one of the parties come into the marriage as if he's already married before, we need to be open-minded. Yes, it, it does not mean that we have not seen or heard before or whatever. Even if you have married before, this particular person, you have never married him before. This particular one, you have never married her before. We need to be open-minded. When we become close-minded, it becomes a problem. Big problem because we will not be able to hear what the other person is saying. And once there's misunderstanding, that is the end of the matter. Quickly, I want to talk, what are the foundations of marriage? Like we have said, is a school founded by God. Then, the foundation is on love. The marriage, the school of marriage is founded on what? Love. Even as a matter of fact, even when a man, a young man and a young woman meet, the first thing we talk about is love. Though we may not know the full definition of that love. Abby? Say, I love her. I just love her. I just love her. Whether we know the meaning or not, it is founded on love. The foundation of every relationship is what? It's love. And that love is actually the love of God. Ephesians 5 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us and our offering and his sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savour. It should be on love. Every marriage should be founded on love because God Himself is love. First John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth, not, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Uh, let me see whether verse 23 is relevant also. Verse 23, the same first John chapter 3 says. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us the commandment. So the foundation of marriage is actually on love, but it is as we live together, we understand that love better every day. The walls, the wall of marriage are made of trust. The wall of marriage, they are made of what? Trust. You know, the wall of a house protects. It shields from the sun, from the rain, from weather, from intruders. And that's why trust provides the wall for a marriage. Once that wall falls down, that means there's no more trust. And once there's no trust, you, we agree with me that there's a level, when the Bible talks about trust, there are two levels. There's a trust that actually belongs to God. Abi, There's one that belongs to God. There's another one, another level of trust that needs to operate among us as human beings. It takes trust for us to come to church this morning and we are sitting down with each other. Abi, It's trust. It's trust. That I can sit down beside you and I'm not afraid that you are holding a gun under your dress. Is it not? Trust. But when trust gets out of marriage and fear comes in, this woman can kill me. This man can kill me. This woman can poison me. This woman, hey, hey, I cannot. Then, once that happens, that home is finished. When fear comes in and we can no more sleep on the same bed, then there's no more trust. So trust is the wall of marriage. Trust is the wall of marriage. The door of marriage is made 
of acceptance. The door through which we enter into marriage is made of what? Acceptance. We probably cannot live well with somebody we have not accepted. And acceptance is without condition. I don't know how many of us gave God condition before we married. I want a tall man. Somebody who, who is not uh, scraping his hair like a Pastor Adelike. Somebody who is head is afro. Somebody who has big eyeballs. Somebody who is uh, his leg is straight. Somebody who is an all manner of criteria. But you describe that many times. Nobody meets such criteria. Abi. Even when we are describing the physical look, what about the behavior? What about the character? What about the talking habit, eating habit? There are people when they are eating. The whole house we know that somebody is eating. Abi? But this guy meets your physical criteria. But you don't know that when he is eating, he will be making noise. Or sometimes when you when he fits the physical criteria, you don't know that when he snores, his message is is a nine one one. Message is nine one one. It's not a lorry. <laughs> and when we enter, we say, Ah, I don't know. It's like this. We can never know everything. My parents cut it for 10 years. Even in spite of that, when we grew up, they managed themselves so much until maybe 1991, 92. I was already in the university. That was when I knew that they quarreled. When they now started inviting us, tell your mother, tell your mommy. And mommy will say, tell your father, tell your father. We didn't know that. But I was saying, in those 10 years when they were cutting, uh-uh. Didn't they see all of this? If they have caught it for 50 years, marriage starts the day they start living together. There's no doubt about that. Let them cut for 50 years. They have not started. Marriage will start the day they start living together. So, we can't see it all. All we need to do is acceptance. Jesus accepts us the way we are. The way we talk, the way we do, the way we eat and sleep and do a manner of things. He does not reject us because of that. Even the children that we give birth to, are they perfect? Sometimes there are some things we see in their lives. Ah, ah, how do you see that it's my own son that is doing like this? Do you, because of that, throw them away? No. We have to accept them. That's who they are. And trusting God. And there are some things we can never be able to change. Acceptance. Once there's no acceptance, then that's the end. The windows are made of understanding. This has a relationship with acceptance too. The windows of marriage are made of what? Understanding. That's why Paul was always telling us that we should bear with one another. It's not everything that we can talk about. It's not everything that you see that you comment about. It's not everything that happens. There are some things you just look at it and say, well, 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 well. You just overlook and walk away. Abi? There are some things you have to remove your eyes from. If it is not a matter of life and, and death. And sometimes they are just small, small things. So somebody who likes his house, when he puts his tablet on the table, he has measured the length from here to here. He has measured the length and measured, and we look at it. And it, it is good when there are no children. But when you have two or three children and very active, and you came from work, I will use the name of uh, somebody who is a friend. He will not fight with me. Oloruko Babami. Mama Shola. Mama Shola. These children have touched my iPad. Oh, Debe. One Debe. One Debe. One Debe. These children. 
Do you want to give out to children that will not be playing? And how did they know? I measured it. <laughs> you don't need children. Thank God they are there. Abby, thank God they are there to scatter your house, to turn it upside down. That is home. Abby, that is home. But when you enter a house and there are children, everything is always the way it is, the way it was yesterday, today, and forever. You know, there's a problem in that house. There's a problem in that. There's a problem. Problem of freedom. There's a problem of expression. It is that as they grow, that will begin to teach them. When you do something like this, you put it the way you met it. Abby? But when you cannot remove your eyes, you, you have to be complaining about everything. And one, once you are complaining, what will happen? Members of the family will begin to withdraw. Abby? They withdraw. They withdraw. When it is your thing, ah, 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 hey, Tolu, <laughs> you are the one touching daddy's book. Okay. I will report. I'm not there, oh. <laughs> And the children knows that they cannot come near you. How long will they stay with you? And that means when they have problems, they won't come back to you. They would rather go to their friends. And honestly, I must confess here from this puppy, when I was a teenager, and because of discipline, discipline, I prefer that time, I prefer to go and die with my friends than to talk with my parents. Because I felt they were too tough. I felt they were too tough. If you explain, you will be caned. If you don't explain, you will be caned. It's, like, ah, it's better I don't explain. <laughs> so, I, a time came, I said, look, if my friends that if they say we are going to enter the fire and we will die, I say, what are we doing at home? I say, let's go. I'm just telling you the truth. I'd rather go and die there than to come back. I mojukuro. And with that, we push them out. There was a day. Ah. God will forgive me. I am the, I'm the, I'm the firstborn or the most troublesome. I don't think any of them, any of my younger ones, were as troublesome as I was. Even not my father, my father said that. Always, I don't know how I lived that time. One day, a man came to our house. He was one of my daddy's old students. He just came, came with bicycle. I was learning how to ride bicycle then. So as soon as the man entered, mm. <laughs> so one of my uncles just put me on the bicycle and I pedaled oh, up and down the street, oh, up and down. So it was about the time for me to stop. I didn't know that when you stop, I have to put one leg down. I didn't know. So as soon as I just went down like that, bah, and this left uh, harm, just dislocated. Now, I think daddy just came back from school. He was a teacher then. Mommy just came back from the hospital. Yeah, she was a nurse. So I just said, Babio! I said, Babio! Everybody ran outside, and they saw me. So they were carried, and daddy was asking, oh, shake my man. Oh, shake my <laughs> Because if I ever called her, before she would even say, bele, 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 ah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so you can understand that if something happened to me, I won't call them. I'd rather call my friends. But see, my friends, we're listening at the same level, Abby. 
I love Mujukuro. Either on the part of the wife or the husband, there are some things that are not worth it. They are not worth it. I'm not saying that we'll be loose and careless. But we need to maintain the balance. So that when our children have problems, they can run back home and say, Daddy, I have this problem. Mommy, I have this problem. But if we have created a barrier because of this, even when they are dying, they won't come back. I'm telling you. They won't. Even when their friends are telling them, hey, call your daddy. Call, mm, mm, I don't want to call daddy. But he already made up his mind before he left home. And many times, we don't have enough time to undo what we have, what we have done. We don't have time. And that's why the, the boy will fall sick, we have problem in school, and he will be trying to solve the problem by him or herself. And the day you know, say, ah, ah, and you cannot call me. And you, I come, I will buy none. Call me, call you. I will call you. <laughs> because they have tested us with little, little, little things. And they have discovered that, ah, these people. I'm not saying we will not discipline. But we must do it in such a way. They are, their mind will be drawn to the house. But when their mind is not drawn to our homes, there is a problem. We can overdo some things. Understanding. Understanding. There was one day too. Apart from that, ah, I used to... I didn't mean it, but I used to destroy many things. Ah, the amount of china plate I broke in our house. I don't know what was wrong with my leg. I would have washed it, just bringing it from the back. Something just happened before, you know. It. So we used to call it a oti pekute. And from that afternoon, so many, and ah, after prayer, you will eat. After prayer in the night, then we now open the gallery for punishment. Everybody will be there and uh, you now begin to. So one day, one day, we bought this fan, standing fan. And we have been using it for long, ago, for long. I'm just talking about understanding. So one day, I don't know, my mommy, she's not used to electronics at all, at all. But I don't know what she was looking for there. She just went, she wanted to put on the fan. And as soon as she thought the fan, what was she right? <laughs> the fan. I now entered that I said, Mommy, you have spoiled the fan. <laughs> she was now angry. She said, You, hey, you, you spoiled the fan. She said, Better left for work on you, spoil it. Whereas I knew that that thing gradually the thing has been having fault, Abby. But if you were to be a child, will you even understand that that fan you have been using for six, seven years is wearing out, Abby? I just wanted to pull her leg. I said, hey, Mommy, are you labor fan? Yeah, yeah. You are the one who spoiled it. Eh? Yeah, but I only thought, yeah, by touching you, have spoiled it now. <laughs> Understanding. We need to look at context. Let's look at the context of happenings before we come to a conclusion. Because what we see may not be what really is the matter. But many times, we don't give our children that opportunity for them to explain. Because before the point we now catch them or whatever, we are rebuking. Something must have been happening. Let him explain. But when we don't do that, then I think we can throw them out. The Lord will help us. The same way with ourselves as husbands and wives. Everything that happens has a context. Everything that happens has an history. Just take time. Listen to the history, whether it makes sense or before you just conclude. Bam! The furniture of marriage is made of blessings. The furniture of marriage is made of what? Blessing. And you know, like we are sitting down on this furniture now, it's giving us comfort. Is it not so? It's a blessing that we are not standing. Then the rule of marriage is made of faith. Faith. 
without faith, we cannot please God. The roof of our marriage is made of what? Faith. Faith does not see before it believes. And of course, marriage is a journey of faith. Marriage itself is a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know. Somebody who is looking handsome, very agile today, who knows tomorrow, 10 years, 15 years down the line, who knows what can happen. So we are just joining by faith. By faith. So what are the expectations as I'm going to round off now? Those of us who are undergraduates in the school of marriage, number one, even in the times of storm, we should not be unwise and run outside. Even in the time of storm, we should not be unwise and do what? And run outside. The man of God emphasized this so much during last week. Number two, we should keep in mind that the school of marriage is still the safest place to be. Marriage is still what? The safest place. If we run out, hotel, when we sleep in the hotel, on sleeping elsewhere, living elsewhere, you will always feel unsafe. Because it is not your natural habitat. People will even look at you and say, Ah, she or she, you have spent so much in this place. Hey, Lord, Lenny. Because they expect that your home is still the safest place. Your room, your bedroom is still the safest place. Then, if we have assignments for each day, we should not go to sleep before unless we complete that assignment. Whatever obligation we have to make or do for each other, we should complete it before we go to sleep. We should communicate. And communicate, communication even starts from ordinary greeting. Even when we have fought and fought like Ukraine and Russia, when we wake up the following morning, there's nothing that says we should not say Good morning. And the other person should answer. After all, we will greet our enemy at work. Abi? We will greet our enemy at work. Cut C. So fighting does not mean that, okay, when you now greet me, I will not answer. Or I, because of that, I will not greet you. Communication starts from there. When I greet and you answer, he's telling me there is hope. Abi, it's a signal of hope. But when we cannot greet in the house, then we are saying hope is lost. Then we are encouraged also to communicate with our fellow students and with the principal. We should communicate with our fellow student and the principal. Because when we cut off communication, then that relationship will soon die. And sometimes communication, like a man of God, whenever there was a problem with the wife, and when he's praying, he said, God, God, omonyito wan le mi, ototishen kobay omonyito wan le mi, and that's serious prayer. Because there's some prayer, you don't pray and begin to do like this. You talk as in talking face to face because you are just reporting to God. Abi? Just reporting to God. We need to communicate. You can go to God. Oh no, that's not way. Okay. So if he's praying, Baba. That son of yours, Olori Kokoye, he has started again, no? He has started again, no? And we report. Just like children do. They will come and report each other and say, okay, well, 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 sorry, sorry. I will. Don't touch her again, no? Sometimes we need to go to God. But when we feel that there's a matter that is too big to talk to God about, we are saying, God, 
you can do all things, but this one, you can never do it. And God will say, well, since you can handle it alone, carry it by yourself. Carry it by yourself. We can talk to God. We can talk to God. And we need to remember, and I know there are many things in our classmates that we don't appreciate. We should remember that God is not finished with any one of us yet. God is not finished with any one of us. No one is a finished product in marriage. None of us. None of us is a finished product. So we should take it as a challenge and we should work on it together. We should not forget to study our textbook, the only book, the curriculum. We should not forget. We should go back to examples. Who in the Bible, which family in the Bible is similar to our own? We study. Let's see how they were able to adjust, how they were able to take this in. Then our family altar. Sometimes when there's a quarrel, the first thing, one of the first things that breaks down is family altar. One party does not want to pray with the other one. As if God does not know that we are fighting. I think for me, it may be an insult to God. Number two, it may be a way of, we are blocking the source of our own blessing. When we shun family altar for whatever reason, when we shun family altar for whatever reason, we are blocking the source of blessing. We are blocking the source of joy. So we must have that assembly every day, every day before our God, who is the principal. Where sometimes we feel like not attending classes, like we have said, there's no break. We have to attend all the same. We must not quit. When we are tempted to quit, we must find courage and continue. We must find courage and continue. Some tests and exam may be tough. And we are saying, ah, ah, this is too much. This is too much. I can't bear this. But we must know that the principal knows how much we can bear. Our principal knows how much each one of us can do what? Can bear. So it will not test us beyond what we can bear. Because one thing about God is that as long as we are in his hand, a test, we run away for, for 10 years, we are still coming back to take it. Oh. Two of us, we are coming back. It may be there is something God wants to develop in our lives, especially the fruit of the Spirit. And the best person that he can use to develop it is our spouse. The best person. To test your patience, to test your level of anger, to test everything is who? Our spouse. He will not use your friend. When your friend offends you, what do you do? You cut it off. You have nothing to lose. Our children can even offend us. One day, one day, they will develop wings and do what? They fly away. But our spouses are going nowhere. So the, is the one, they are the one God will use to develop that fruit of the Spirit. And as long as we keep on failing, we keep on repeating that class. So, if we run away from tests, you are still coming back. Other things may be prospering, but you have not passed God's test. We need to just be humble, take courage and face it. And we see that God is not wicked. We need to remember that different subjects are offered in this school. Many, many issues. But love is the major one. Love without condition. Love without condition. To be loved is a good thing. But to love could be very, very challenging. Everybody wants to be loved unconditionally. But who is going to love? unconditionally. Everybody wants to be accepted unconditionally. But who is going to accept others unconditionally? 
Everybody wants to be trusted. Then who is that man that will do what? That will trust the other person too. Somebody have said, many times we judge our own self by our motive. Abi? We judge ourselves by our motive. If I take this bottle now and I throw it, maybe I want to throw it, but somehow I made a mistake and he eats somebody. In my heart, I knew I was not targeting that person. Abi? All right? And he eat, eat that person. The person will think, he will only judge me by what? By my action. So many times we judge people by their own action. But when I want to judge myself, I judge myself by what? By my motive. But my motive is not always known to people. And that's where we need understanding. That's where we need love. We need to sit down and be able to understand that person's motive before just judging by mere action. And then we conclude. And since you can throw this thing to, uh, at me, there's nothing you cannot throw in your life. Ah, it's not, that is not it. We are only judging by action. Whereas we judge ourselves by our own motive. Well, me or they mean, eh? me or mean, eh? they will never see motive. So if we are judging people, if we are judging ourselves by our own motive, then let us always try to judge other people by, by what? By motive. What could be behind? Maybe the person does not mean to do evil. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was, I understand that person that way. As we do this, the Lord will help us. We shall not fail in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. God has given us marriages as a gift. It will not become a cause in the name of Jesus. Can we bow down our heads as we pray and talk to God? It's a school that we will never graduate from. We can't run away from it. Except if we are going to run away from God. Psalm 139, the psalmist said, I wish I can develop wings and fly away. He said, even there, your spirit will locate me. Where are we going to run to? We can run away from God. It's better that we just brace up and ask God, what more adjustments can I make? A blessed marriage brings joy, brings fulfillment. What else can I give up to show understanding? And then we will see that we will be, we, 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 we be able to enjoy our lives. It is not even about what people will say. It is about the war going out in our hearts. A lot of war going on. This war can come to an end if we allow God. I believe so. The war can come to an end. The struggle, the battle going on. Even sometimes when we wish it away, when we cover it with activities, it is still there. When we cover it with some other things and say, well, I want to forget about this man or woman. Let me, let me be busy with this thing. The Bible says a heart that is sorrowful knows that it is sorrowful. But I believe that that sorrow can be dealt with if we allow God. I myself, I need help as a man, as a person. All of us, we need help. At every age, we need help. We need help. So that we can really, really enjoy what God has given to us. If we are married for 70 years and we call it for 60, what is the enjoyment? We call it out of that 70, 60. That means the long life does not even worth it. Let God help us. God does not have problems. Our nonny, the man and the woman, we are the problems. We are the problems. Let's ask God for grace, more grace, more grace. Let's ask that God, God, just help me to stretch my heart, enlarge my heart a little more, a little more. 
a little more, a little more. Just a little more elastic. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we come before you this morning with a very sense of humility. Especially those of us who are married and we still have our spouses alive. We have seen a lot, we have experienced a lot that gives us trepidation. But we have seen from your word today that in this school there's no holiday, there's no graduation, and we cannot run away from our marriages. All we are asking for this morning is the grace. Grace for our hearts to be enlarged. Grace for our hearts to be stretched a little more to accommodate what we need to accommodate in our spouses. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every home here this morning, including my own. Lord, that we shall not fail. We have seen your commitment to us that you say you will be the God of all families. And you are saying it because you have loved us with an everlasting love. Love that nothing can stop. Nothing in this world can stop it. Because of that, pray that Lord you will help us to be able to surrender more and more to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal us in all the areas of our families where we need healing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, immortal God. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time. The Lord bless you.